Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Thomas Rayner, and we are about to have ourselves a little bit of a smackdown, a little competition between the Azure Portal and the Azure RM PowerShell module. And uh, we're going to have a series of challenges and see which one is best suited for each of those jobs that they represent. Now, before we get too deep into this, obviously there's lots of tools out there for managing your Azure resources, uh, and we're just looking at two of them right now. What I see a lot of people who are new to Azure get trapped in is they figure out how to do something by clicking around in the portal, and then that's the only way they ever do it again, and they never find out how to automate or script or interact with it through the Azure RM portal, and uh, they're missing a lot of opportunities to optimize their workflow and uh, and take advantage of some of the other PowerShell goodies that come with managing Azure. Uh, if you want to connect with me, I'm on Twitter, LinkedIn, I've got a blog. Uh, these slides and for this and other presentations are on my GitHub. Uh, and uh, without that, uh, without sorry, without any further ado, let's get into what we're here to talk about. Uh, just a quick word on scope, I kind of alluded to it, uh, but there's lots of deployment models. There's both the classic and the resource manager deployment model within Azure, um, and we're not looking at both of them, as well as there's a number of different command line interfaces, CLI interfaces as I guess a little bit of a typo in the slide, but uh, there's the Azure Cloud Shell, which is available in both PowerShell and Bash. There's the Azure CLI, which is its own thing. And then there's the Azure RM PowerShell module. Uh, in today's uh, short uh, session here, we're looking only at the Resource Manager deployment model and the Azure RM PowerShell module. Uh, everything in here has its own use case. Like there's uh, certain Azure artifacts that you can only deploy in the classic deployment model. Uh, the Azure Cloud Shell is available on a mobile device like an iPhone or an Android device. Uh, and the Azure CLI has its own use cases as well. It's just in kind of the uh, being considerate of time and also thinking about what the most popular tools to manage Azure are. Uh, these are the two we're going to focus on. So we're going to do uh, resource manager deployed resources. Uh, we're going to use the Azure RM PowerShell module. And then obviously also the um, portal.azure.com web interface. Uh, but that doesn't make any of these other items uh, less interesting or valuable. Uh, also, just talking about my environment a little bit, is because uh, we're going to do some demos here pretty quick. Uh, I am using uh, version 5.1.1 of the Azure RM PowerShell module. Uh, and if you're not sure uh, what version you've got, you can import it and run this get module uh, command as well. And if you're not sure if that's the latest version, if there might be a new version released, you can use the find module commandlet to search the PowerShell gallery. Uh, you can see at the time I'm uh, sharing this with you, uh, I've got 5.1.1 installed, and that's also the latest version on the uh, PowerShell gallery. Uh, if you find a mismatch, if you're on version 4.0.2 or something and 5.1.1 is out, you can just use install-module to install the latest version of, uh, of the Azure RM module. And so, just kind of, you can see real quick, uh, if I do a get command for all of the commands that have Azure in the name, I've got over 3,000 commandlets and functions available to me now that all have to do with managing Azure resources. So a lot of people go, oh, there's not a way to do that in PowerShell, or oh, I don't know how to do that in PowerShell. But a lot of it is uh, is just committing a little bit of time into focusing and, and figuring out what you actually need to accomplish. With over 3,000 different commandlets, there's, uh, there's almost certainly one for whatever it is you're trying to do. So let's begin the SmackDown. Let's go round one and just logging in. Uh, so I will pop open my dashboard. No, oh, first I'll sign out. But to sign in, I just need to go to portal.azure.com and I'll pick my account, enter my super turbo secret password, and I'll be logged in. And that's it for the web portal. Now I'm authenticated. In the 
uh, Azure PowerShell RM commandlet. I've already imported it to save a little time. It's pretty easy. It's just add Azure RM account. And this looks pretty familiar, doesn't it? I'll just do my credentials here. And it's going to do a little bit of redirecting, pretty much the same as the web portal here. And there, boom, I'm logged in. I'll also do a select Azure RM subscription. I'm very good at typing, just not when anyone's watching. And this is about all it takes for me to be logged in in the PowerShell uh, module as well. And I can begin working with all the different Azure stuff I want to do. So, logging in, here's our scoreboard. Uh, right now, we're going to leave the score at 0, zero. It's just logging in. Uh, it was an extra step in the PowerShell module to select a specific subscription, but I didn't have to do that. I was just kind of saving time. Uh, by specifying the subscription that I want to work in for our upcoming demos and uh, in the portal it's just kind of a non-issue to pick one or look at all of them it's uh, it, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it in the web portal but I don't really feel good giving anybody a point uh, saying one's better than the other because really they both just put you through the same login process and then you're away to the races so how about we perform an actual task. Uh, this one is going to be a routine task at 4 in the morning. And I'll ask you to use your imagination a little bit here because it's probably not 4 in the morning uh, where you are when you're watching this. Uh, but uh, say, okay, first things first, I've got to set my alarm for probably 3.45 and then open up my computer and log in and do what we just did to set this all up. And then whatever it was I was going to do, maybe I'm coming into demo VM01 and I'm going to turn it on. Well, that's not so bad. Now, with the PowerShell side, though, we have access to uh, Azure Automation, which we can use to perform routine tasks like this unattended. So I'm just going to go into the MVP Days demo automation account I've got and set up a new runbook. Select Add a Runbook. Create a new one. And then we'll just call this Start VM Demo. Make it a PowerShell runbook because that's what we're doing right now. Create. It'll provision. And I can put some code in. So I might do something like Start Azure RM VM name. What was the name of it? I think it was. Uh, we even just take another look here. Open this in another tab. You can easily get this information with PowerShell as well. It's just pain switching back and forth. Uh, that was my automation account virtual machines demo VM01 resource group name yeah, it's just demo VM RG and I can save this and publish it and now what the really nice thing I can do is I can hit schedule link a schedule to the run book create a new schedule go at 4 a.m. and I'm gonna have it start say I want to do this on February 2nd and I want to do it at oh 400 oh, where am I going a.m and click create and okay and now that same task I was going to perform which was waking up at 4 a.m. going and finding this virtual machine and clicking start can be done by this Azure Automation runbook 
if I view the contents here again it's very simple it's just starting the Azure RM VM Azure Resource Manager Virtual Machine uh, with that name in this resource group and so by doing that I've got it uh, scheduled to run at 4 a.m. which means I don't have to wake up at 4 a.m. I can sleep in I can set this up ahead of time like I'm doing right now it's not 4 a.m. as I'm recording this but on February 2nd at 4 a.m. that thing will kick off and work now virtual machine that's kind of a silly example because on the virtual machines themselves you can configure auto shutdown uh, and you can configure other ways of having these things turn on and off uh, on demand for you but uh, I just wanted to use a quick and uh, kind of a simple example pretty relatable thing to imagine uh, that you might wake up turn a machine on this could be patching this could be deleting log files it could be promoting a piece of code uh, whatever it is uh, you can see that it's uh, something you can script and so uh, the point here is uh, you can wake up at four in the morning or you can spend an extra five minutes when you're already awake and save yourself that few hours of sleep and save yourself having to wake up and have this thing run unattended on a schedule automated for you. So that is round two, routine tasks at four in the morning. Uh, and we're gonna give that one to PowerShell. Uh, a little sub caption here, Azure's always awake. Do you wanna be awake too? Uh, and that's sort of the point, is you can run PowerShell scripts unattended, you can run them in Azure Automation, you can run them other places, uh, but you might as well take advantage of Azure Automation. The, they don't cost very much, uh, and it definitely costs a lot less than you waking up at 4 in the morning to do some weird stuff to your Azure resources. So, our score after two rounds, the first round didn't really count, is just logging in. Our score is one nothing. So let us continue to and I'm, I know I'm the only guy scoring them so you're just gonna have to deal with that uh, maybe there's a little bias because I'm a PowerShell MVP but hey you're trying to learn something so stick with me uh, round three create one new resource group so we'll go in the Azure uh, RM PowerShell module first and we'll scroll this up a little bit uh, if I don't know what I'm doing in the PowerShell module, there's a process of discovery I can go through, such as I know I want to do something with resource groups, so I want to make a new one. I'm relatively familiar with PowerShell, so I'm just going to go get command. I'm going to go new dash, and then I don't know exactly what it is, star resource, star group, star. And just gonna, what I'm doing is I'm just searching for all of the commands that look like they might create a new resource group. And let's find out what I have. And it's going to do a little bit of searching. And then uh, I get uh, four, really two different commandlets here. My Azure RM storage table uh, module as well as the Azure RM.resources module both return some information here. And they are new Azure RM resource group and new Azure RM resource group deployment. Now, I don't know what a deployment is in this scenario, but I do know I want a new Azure RM resource group. That's probably what I need. So let's go get uh, help. New Azure RM resource group. And I'm going to get a whole bunch of information on it here. Uh, here's what it is, creates new Azure resource group. That sounds like that's what I want. Uh, description is going to make a new resource group. Give it a name and a location. Okay, that makes sense. Um, here's some related links. Uh, I can get some examples. Uh, but let's just see if we can figure this one out and say new Azure RM resource group. Said so it needs a name. Use tab completion to finish that off. I'm going to name it. MVP days reg create demo because I'm pretty sure I haven't used that name yet and it said it needs a location and let's just try West US see what we get oh that wasn't too bad it gave me some output saying resource group name MVP days dash RG dash create demo location in the West US provisioning state succeeded so I can pretty much expect that if I do a get Azure RM resource group and I do name oh I don't want that leading space 
there it is. It's giving me the same output. Maybe I can pipe it into select star. And it also would have given me the text table. So there's not really a lot of information to be seen on it uh, in this view. So not so bad. We did a little bit of discovery. Um, you have to have a certain level of comfort with PowerShell, but Git command and Git help are very standard uh, commandlets that everybody learning PowerShell should be familiar with. So let's go back to the web portal. And uh, again, we're kind of playing like we don't really know how to do this task. Uh, in the PowerShell module, we searched for different commands. We used get help to figure out how they work. And so we're going to try to kind of fumble through it in the web portal like we fumbled through it in PowerShell. Uh, and so right off the bat, we can even just start kind of from the home screen here. Uh, this panel on the side uh, looks like a pretty good place to start. New is there. Resource groups are there. I'm just going to click on new because I want to make a new resource group. Uh, search them. I don't know. Let's make a resource group. Enter. Want to make a new resource group? Okay. So far, so good. Uh, you can read resource groups allow you to manage all your resources, etc. Create, and then it looks like it's asking me for exactly what the last one asked before. It needs a new name. Uh, MVP days. Um, RG create. Demo. And I'm just going to add a GUI at the end here. Uh, what subscription, what location. I want them in, I'll put it in West US just like the other one. And on the uh, PowerShell module, I, I knew what West US was. I knew that was a uh, location that was valid that I could use. Uh, in the portal here, I've got a drop down list full of them, so it's pretty easy to pick what I want. Do I want it in Korea? Do I want it in Canada? Uh, Let's go West US because that's physically closest to me and say create. Resource group added. I can go to the resource group or I'll just, uh, let's do that. Get my overview and this looks a lot like it looked in PowerShell, just organized in the GUI. Tags, deployments, resource costs. These are very standard boilerplate items. Uh, and this is just an empty resource group. It's literally a shell waiting for me to put resources in it. So there's not a whole lot of interesting stuff to see here. So all in all, if we kind of go back to our slides here and review, uh, the experience of discovering how to do that in PowerShell was pretty convenient because I was familiar with the PowerShell tools. I knew about get command, I knew about get help, which you should too. They're wonderful commandlets and they're the fundamental uh, building blocks of discovering anything in PowerShell. But there's something about fumbling around in PowerShell that doesn't feel quite as efficient as fumbling around in the GUI. In the GUI, I can poke around, I can explore, I can go back and forth between pages, and it just feels a little bit more um, beginner-friendly, I guess is the, the way I'd like to put it. So, that being said, the web portal's tied up the game. We're at 1-1. One, one. And uh, that's one for PowerShell, one for the web portal. Uh, there is a PowerShell module for everything, uh, but there's just uh, there's no getting around the fact that uh, poking around in the web GUI is a little bit more comfortable for someone who doesn't quite know where they're going. So this is kind of a discoverability contest. Uh, was the PowerShell easier to discover, or was the web portal easier to discover? And I would argue that it's easier to discover how to perform new tasks in the web portal myself. So, let's keep it moving. On round four, this is also our last round, so it's uh, best out of three, uh, three rounds that have any points awarded to them. And it's a lot like the last one, except it's create 10 new resource groups. So last one, we were just creating one. This one, we're creating 10. Last round, we were kind of fumbling through, trying to figure out uh, what, uh, what the steps were to do the task. And in this one, now we're doing bulk creation. We're doing a lot of different stuff. So let's hop into the GUI. And just like we did, I'm going to go new. And I can even do it a little different to save some time. Resource groups, add. And we're going to go GUI 1, create. And I'm going to click add and go GUI 2, Click create. And you can kind of see where we're going here. I'm going to click add again. 
GUI 3, oh, GUI, create. And just for good measure, I'm, you know, I'm just going to do four. I think you guys get the, get the point here. GUI 4, create. Validating, and there we go. And I can keep clicking it, and I can keep seeing them uh, popping up here. Let's refresh this list. And there's my GUI 1, 2, 3, 4. And every time I want to make that uh, GUI, I'm gonna, or sorry, a new resource group, I'll click Add again. Let's make it an even 5, shall we? GUI-5 and create, oh, create. And refresh this list again, and there it is. So not the worst experience in the world. Thankfully, the resource groups provision themselves very quickly. So it's not really a disaster of an experience trying to do that. But let's just try the same thing in the Azure RM PowerShell module. Uh, first thing, I want to show you something about PowerShell is you can go one and then dot dot 10. And what this is going to do is it's going to create an array full of the numbers one through 10. And if I hit enter, it's just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I can use that, 1 to 10, or 1 to 10, not 100. And I can pipe that into for each object. And then execute a script block. And so just first I'll show you, this is number, just to kind of show you the proof of concept here. Uh, oops. I forgot a period. Try that. Uh, so what this is doing is it's taking the numbers 1 through 10 and then for each of them it's writing out this is a number dollar underscore as a reference to the one that we're currently working on. So this is number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I can leverage that and I can go 1 dot dot 10 and pipe that into for each object. Go new Azure RM resource group, just like we did before, and go name is going to be uh, PowerShell, and then the unique number, and location is going to be West US, and close my loop, hit enter, pray for no typos, there's one, two, three, Four, and this is going to create all 10 of them and I can go uh, get a coffee while this is running if this was longer like I said the resource groups provision very quickly so this isn't really a, a long running task but instead of having to manually click my way through a whole bunch of different uh, menus and wizards and going through the exact same thing every time it was just one command it was just this command here to create all of those new resource groups and so resource groups provision quickly what if I was doing something that didn't provision quickly uh, what if I was creating new virtual machines or if I was um, filling out uh, new app service certificates uh, or something of that nature and I just needed 10 of them I'm setting up a lab for students to uh, play with in the morning and I need to set up uh, a bunch of new VMs there's templates and a whole bunch of other ways of setting up VMs but I could also just do this I could just use the same concept of taking 1 through 10 and for each of them doing a new Azure RM VM or new Azure RM uh, app service or whatever you may be uh, playing with or etc. This could be an array of users uh, and for each of them you're creating them their own VM. This could be connected to Active Directory somehow. So it's pretty flexible and there's a lot you can do with it obviously in terms of connecting to other systems. If I had um, a need to get a list of these resource groups uh, in the... Oh, come back here. If I need a list of these things I can click and then what can I do? Maybe columns? I'm not sure. What's the easiest way to get a list of these things into a CSV? Well, it's pretty easy in, uh, in the PowerShell module. I can get Azure RM resource group. And first, just take a look here. And I can pipe it into where oops, object name matches PowerShell dash. Nope, oh, did I mess that up? Oh, it's resource group name, not just name. 
And now if I wanted to, I could pipe that into export CSV path into ctemp uh, psvms.csv. And then there I go. I can uh, open that up and look at that CSV. I'm not going to do it here because it's not really useful for you, but uh, this is uh, this is the fundamentals of working with these things in PowerShell. Is you can uh, work with other systems very conveniently. Uh, that earlier there's a PowerShell module for everything as a reference to this. You can connect it to Active Directory, connect it to your file system, uh, connect it to Exchange, whatever you need. Um, the interoperability in PowerShell is far beyond what it is in the uh, in the web portal, and that extends into uh, doing bulk work. So. Uh, hands down, in the creating uh, 10 resource groups, I know we didn't do 10 of either, but you get the idea. Well, we did 10 PowerShell ones. Uh, doing less pointy clicky means you get to do more interesting and fun. So rather than spending an afternoon clicking through the wizard a dozen times to create new virtual machines, wouldn't it be better to set a PowerShell command up, run it in the background, and while it's going and creating all your new VMs, you're free to go do whatever else it is that you want to be doing with your time instead of going through the same wizard over and over again. So. That's our score, two to one, uh, PowerShell two, Web Portal one. Obviously, we par we cherry picked some examples and some stuff that we went through here, uh, but we've got some key takeaways. We've got some lessons learned that I want to impart with you guys. Uh, the first is you don't need incredible PowerShell prowess to use the Azure RM PowerShell module. Uh, there's lots of stuff out there, uh, including the get command, get help uh, commandlets that uh, will help you discover what comes with that PowerShell module. There's lots of people blogging about this, myself included. Uh, there's lots of good documentation on Microsoft's uh, docs.microsoft.com website. Uh, and there's uh, a whole bunch of ways for you to get into this uh, as, a, as a beginner. If you don't uh, find yourself comfortable in PowerShell, that's okay because you don't have to be. Uh, the important thing is you get started and get trying. Uh, repetitive tasks are generally well suited for automation. So, uh, things where you're waking up at four in the morning uh, every night, this, or sorry, every day this week, uh, wouldn't you rather write an Azure Automation Runbook to go do that instead? And uh, hey, I've got 30 of the same task to do. Well, that's a great uh, use case for some code rather than for some uh, some pointing and clicking. And then the web portal is easy to explore. So if you're new to Azure in general, uh, there's no harm in exploring in the web portal and figuring out what it is you want to do and how to get something up and running. Uh, but when you start getting a little more comfortable, you're definitely going to want to be able to uh, say that you're taking advantage of the PowerShell modules. These are all just tools that you have available at your disposal. This, like the other ones that we didn't talk about, like the Cloud Shell, uh, the classic deployment, um, classic deployment uh, scheme, they're all available to you. you. Use the best one for the job. So if you have 100 v virtual machines to provision, probably going to want to use PowerShell. If you're just looking to poke around and figure something out uh, really quickly and comfortably, you probably want to be in the web portal. And so use whatever works, use whatever you're going to be able to deliver for your client or for your boss, uh, but in the long term you're going to want to make sure that you're comfortable with all of these tools because they all have different advantages and disadvantages. They all have their own use cases where they work better than the others. Uh, that's why they all exist. So. With that, I'd like to thank you very much for giving me your time today and learning a little bit about the Azure PowerShell module. Uh, you can connect with me, again, on Twitter is a great way to reach me. I'm on LinkedIn. I've got my blog there as well where I post predictably about cloud and PowerShell related things. Uh, ask me whatever you want uh, about these or other topics. Happy to chat about DevOps, IT strategy, uh, cloud and data center management, PowerShell and automation. Uh, definitely always happy to connect with people uh, who enjoy these sessions. And uh, with that, I'm looking forward to connecting with you and enjoy the rest of MVP days. There's a lot of great sessions uh, coming up and uh, available on the recordings afterwards. Thanks again. See you later.